Yeah, so we won. We won a long time ago, right? Uh, capitalism works, socialism doesn't. Uh, all you have to do is look to your northern border and see what's happening in Venezuela. As if we needed one more example of the complete misery caused by socialism. Everywhere it's tried, every time it's tried, no matter the continent, no matter the century, no matter the decade, socialism fails. And the opposite is true as well. Every time capitalism is tried, to the extent that it is tried, it succeeds. You free up China a little bit, and boom, wealth is created. You free up India, wealth is created. And of course, as I mentioned before, 300 years ago, before capitalism, we were all dirt poor. All of us were dirt poor. And capitalism made us relatively rich. It extended life by more than double, maybe triple. It's made life so much better. So not only have we won the economic argument with great economists like Mises and Hayek and Friedman and others, but we've won the existential question. History proves unequivocally that socialism, statism, collectivism are failures and that freedom and capitalism works and are enormous successes. And nobody cares. Nobody cares. Everybody wants to be a socialist. Nobody wants to be a capitalist. Everybody wants to be poor. Everybody wants to die of starvation. Everybody wants to be oppressed. Everybody wants to have no freedom. That's what socialism represents, but they all want it somehow next time not to result in that. So I think we should all ask ourselves why. Why is socialism so attractive? It's not because it succeeds. It's not because it produces anything. It's not because people are wealthy and, you know, die old and have happy lives. It's the opposite. So why is it successful? Why do people love it? And my argument, Ayn Rand's, Ayn Rand's argument was that people love socialism because it's consistent with the moral, ethical beliefs that we hold as a culture. We think sacrifice is noble. Well, the socialists want to sacrifice you in the name of nobility. If you believe that suffering is good for the common good, for the public interest, then socialists are very good at suffering. They have fine-tuned the art of suffering. They can make you suffer all the time in the name of the common good. As long as we believe that the common good, the public interest, other people's well-being is the moral standard of a good life, of being virtuous, of being noble, of being good, then socialism wins every single time. Every single time. The real revolution that we need is not an economic or political revolution. Those come afterwards. You know, people say, people say politics is downstream from culture. It's become a very popular thing to say, right? Politics is downstream, uh, politics is downstream from culture, which is true. But what's culture downstream from? It's downstream from ethics. It's downstream from morality. It's downstream from philosophy. If you want to change the culture and therefore change the politics, you have to change the moral beliefs of the people. You have to get rid of this altruistic, and I'm sorry if I offend anybody, Christian morality of sacrifice, of uh, altruism, of the idea that other people's happiness is what's important. And we have to replace it with something positive because just being anti is not good enough. We have to replace it with our morality, a nobility, a virtue of self-interest, what Ayn Rand called rational, long-term self-interest. A morality that says that, no, the purpose of life is your own happiness, but not, you know, whatever you feel like doing, whatever the, the moment strikes you, whatever the emotions drive you. No, what in reason, in rationality, really leads to long-term flourishing? To be rational, to be honest, to have integrity, to, 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 to be just towards other people, to treat people the way they deserve. Right? Not to sacrifice, but to trade. Why would you sacrifice? Sacrifice by nature is a win-lose proposition. 
If somebody doesn't lose, it's not a sacrifice. If it's win-win, what do we call it? Trade. I will take win-win over win-lose any day. Because win-lose always turns into lose-lose. And I don't want to lose. So what we should build is a structure, a moral structure on the idea that human relationships should be about win-win. That human relationships should be about individuals pursuing their own self-interest and interacting with one another because it's in your self-interest. That the fundamental moral purpose in your life should be to figure out how to live the best damn life you can live for you. Now, if you had that morality, if you wanted to live a good life, if you cared about your own flourishing, then what kind of world would you want to live in? What kind of politicians would you want to elect? Politicians would tell you what you can eat and what you can't eat, what business you should open and what business you shouldn't open, how much you should pay your employees and how much you're not allowed to pay your employees. No. If you want to live for yourself, if you want a happy, successful, flourishing life for you, you want politicians to leave you alone. You want to make decisions about your life, about your business, about your trading, about your consumption, about how you live your life. You don't believe in authorities dictating to you, coercing you. Individuals who want to flourish as individuals want to be free. Freedom is a consequence. Freedom is a consequence of the idea of individualism. Freedom is a consequence of the morality of individualism, of the idea that what matters, the only thing that matters politically, is the individual and his ability to lead a flourishing life for himself. And individuals who believe that don't succumb to authority, don't choose between left and right. They choose freedom and only freedom. The only standard by which we should measure politicians is the extent to which they will reduce the amount of coercion imposed of us and ideally reduce that amount of coercion imposed on us to zero. Because we, freedom means, as, as, as Link said, the absence of coercion. We should strive towards absence of coercion, not tinkering with regulations, not reducing regulations, eliminating regulations, eliminating controls, eliminating restrictions. For that, just returning, you need a morality of freedom, a morality of individualism, a morality of self-interest, and we need to reject. And this is why it's hard. This is why it's so damn hard. Because Again, we won the economics, we won history, we won everything. But what makes it hard is that we have to reject a moral code that's been instituted among us for 2,000 years and is ingrained in our souls, and we need to take it and put it in the trash bin of history and adopt something new, something better, something that's consistent with capitalism and freedom. Thank you.